uh, fellow lions and guests, and a few people I haven't seen in a while in this table. So, welcome back to uh, the, our Lions Club. He's not listening, but that's okay. Isn't John Palmer Sr. back there? Yeah. It's good to see you again. That's Happy Buck is for just being here with you guys. I just couldn't think of anything better to say, and that's a good thing to say. Let's get the meeting going. Our invocation today will be led by Second VP Ken Botero. Let's bow our heads and, and be very, very thankful for the privilege we have to be here at this time together as Lions Club members and members of the Lions Club and our family here in Longview. We thank you for the privilege we have to help and serve the community to the best we can and to make life a quality of life for those that are about us. The love in our hearts, Father, we're very grateful for all of that is left for us. And we thank you for the food that we have shared this day. And may it bring you nourish and strength our bodies we may continue to serve the inner community. We hope we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And our flag salute will be led by third VP, Leroy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we're going to be led in song by past council chair Hal Palmer. Listen for the tone, you guys. Listen to the tone. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, of the I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of thy pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. Cool. Nice job, Hal. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kathy Carmody, do we have some guests? President Marilyn, hello, Lion, and guests. For Brightford, would you like to introduce your guests, please? Uh, President Marilyn, all Lion's guests, it's my pleasure to introduce one of our newest members as of today, Dan Marshall. And Chair Kim McCork, would you like to introduce your guest, please? President Marilyn, all the last guests, I'm happy to introduce you today. Last time, I'm just a guest. Oh, really? Hey. Really? Hey. And Larry Hanson, would you like to introduce your guest? Can we do it later? He'll do it later. Okay. And would. Hal Palmer. Oh, Hal Palmer. <laughs> I want to say you were joking, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. We need Sunshine Past President Cindy Sessions. President Merrill, fellow Lions guests. Um, I have some news. We have three cards going around, so please sign those. One is that Jan Seri is in the hospital with pneumonia. So we're going to send a card around. I didn't think it would be a very wise decision to send flowers with pneumonia. So um, we'll take care of that after he's out of the hospital. Also, Donnie Gravel is not doing well. We're going to send a Thinking of You card to her. And I spoke with Janice Hellman, and we're doing a Thinking of You card as well for her. She is now getting home hospice health care. Um, 
Her spirits are really good, so don't be, mm, she, she says she's a fighter, she's gonna fight it, she's she's doing all she can. She just went to another other doctor visits yesterday, and I'll be seeing her tonight, so I'll keep you informed. Thank you, Cindy. Okay, um, before we start announcements, I just want to encourage you, if you haven't signed up for any of the concession needs over here, the 4th of July is one of our biggest money makers and we have so much going on. It needs so much manpower. And if you can just even share or split one shift would really help. Uh, we're, we're a little bit desperate for the go forth chuck wagon, especially. We have three full heavy days and I'm gonna let Greg announce all of that, but just know that it's, it's really shorthanded and we don't want to not be able to do it. And it will happen if we can't get enough people to sign up. So, Greg first. <laughs> uh, President Merrill, I'm going to let you guess. Uh, just looking over the list. Uh, night of, uh, what is it, Monday the 3rd, there's one person signed up for the last shift. And on the night of the 4th, one person signed up for that shift. Um, out of all of the shifts, and there are nine of them in the three days, one person signed up for one shift on the cattle corn. That'd be easy, we won't just want to take the cattle corn down. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to fill this up. And like Marilyn says, if we can't get enough people to go down, we'll leave it in the shop. Thank you, Greg. Uh, ice cream, let's see, let's stay on this side. Uh, Greg Swanson, do you have any more to add to your, you had a happy dollar, so you mentioned spirits. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, Bob Jessen, over here. President Maryland, fellow Lions and guests, uh, I'm recruiting till runners. For the ice cream wagon, we need to man the hills with a lion, and some of us are less able to move around and stuff. It'd be a good, perfect job. Uh, we don't want to take manpower away from the beer garden and the Fourth of July wagon. You know, we've got to kind of spread ourselves thin. Uh, it should be easy. It's a two-hour shift. I got it broke up into two-hour shifts. I'm going to try to completely staff it with high school kids. I've got like 16 from Kelso. I've got about six from Mark Morris. I've got a few granddaughters and stuff from Pioneer Line, so we should we'll be okay there. It's just we've got to have somebody run the jail. So I appreciate any help. Uh, maybe we can kind of spread the people around a little bit, but those that can't move around, might be a lot. <laughs> it's not too hard, though. Simple prices. Oh, uh, Harold Malone, right there beside you. President Maryland, fellow Lions, yes. Uh, July, as you can tell, is a real busy, busy month. However, in the middle of July, after that hard time through the fourth, we have a day of pleasure just going out and playing a little golf. So. Need very little bit of help, a little bit, but not much. We'll ask for that later. But we do need more players out there. Just sign your teams up, please. Thank you, Harold. Let's come on up here to Dolly Harvey. You do both of your announcements. President Marilyn, fellow Lions and guests. Yes, I have lots of goal for buttons. One other thing I may like to make an announcement, any new member between now and say Friday noon, any brand new member, the $25 new member fee is waived, one time deal. So you know anybody who wants to join, now is a good time. It's now until say Friday 12 noon. July 1st, it goes up to $35. So let Greg or me know, thanks. Okay, Jim, I didn't get Darlene back there. Darlene needs to say something. President Maryland, 
Carolinas lines and yes, uh, we are getting to the part where relay is only like 50 days away and we have to order t-shirts and stuff. So if you want to be a part of our relay team, uh, I have support. Uh, we have to do kind of ASAP because uh, I have to get the information in or you have to get online and do it. Also, I have a little bit area bag if anybody wants a little bit area bag to decorate. Because um, the best thing of relay, one of the best things is the luminary area uh, uh, show that they put on at uh, 10 o'clock uh, on that on Saturday night. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Our next announcement will be Dick McIntyre. President Maryland, Carol Wyden's guest. It's the last time you get to hear this from me. I'm done with the calling committee after the 4th of July. We need people to be there. And if you work with beer gardens, you can work one of the other shifts or, uh, or two or three shifts. We have to have people at, the beer, at the, all the festivities. I have to fill for the beer garden, the kids races, the chuck wagon, the ice cream wagon, and if we don't get everybody in the club out to participate, a lot of these functions will not keep going. So save my, my breath and everybody sign up. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. While we're there with that, Dick is finishing up his duties this year to get people signed up for the fourth weekend. And Darla Portray, would you mind standing? Darla is one of our newest members, and she has stepped up and said she would do manpower this year. So you'll be hearing from her. Great. I think that's it. I have several. Oh, what, Pat? So you're talking all of Longview and Kelso? <laughs> Hurry up! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got a program. Yes, ask a friend. That's great. Okay, guys, you know, we've been begging and talking and all of that. So I got a cheerleader out there somewhere in the crowd. Right on. Okay, so follow me and you guys can repeat it. Go, Lions, go. Go, Lions, go. Go forth. Spirits of Italy. Spirits of Italy. 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 Oops. I do that all the time. Taste of Italy is gone by. That's right. Spirits. Beer garden. Ice cream wagon. What am I missing? Give me an L. Give me an I. Give me an O. Give me an N. Give me an S. Lions. Lions. What's that spell? Lions. Lions, <laughs> Lions be strong. Go forth. <laughs> Thank you, cheerleaders. Okay, I have just a few announcements myself. I'm not going to take the time. We have some thank you letters. I won't read them. We have a thank you letter from the District G Conference. 
thanking us for our uh, contribution to the silent auction item, which Dolly Harvey bid on and won. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of cool. I need to announce that on July 4th, we will not have a regular club meeting. Why? Because we're going to be at the lake helping Greg, helping ice cream. <laughs> so, so no meeting on July 4th. Bring your picnic lunch or come buy a hamburger and hang out and work. I know it. You know, she gets off her first meeting. I don't get it. Okay. Next Tuesday is a big day. We have several monthly awards and several other awards and recognitions. So I hope that you'll be able to be here for that. It should be a fun day. Um, and I would just like to challenge each and every one of you, if you don't wear your lion's pin, just this little gold pin, wear it next Tuesday. So those tail twisters might even fine you. I don't know. But let's just, just wear it. And one of the reasons I want you to wear it is just because you're a lion, but the fact is that we are going to be celebrating 100 years old, and the International Convention will be starting soon. Right, Hal? Yes. That's right. So we can honor our Lions Club and let the public know by wearing our pins. I walked into a place the other day, and the guy came up to the counter to, you know, ask for help, and he saw my pin. He says, oh, are you here for Lions? You know, so he recognized it, and that was great. Board meeting this Thursday, already again. 7 o'clock, Bob Paul's Cafe, board meeting. Last one for me. And I want to encourage all new board members, and some of you have not been board members, and this is your first year. You're welcome to come. In fact, it's always open to everyone. But if you want to come and kind of get a feel for what goes on at our board meetings, show up at 7 we usually start getting there at 6.30 and ordering a breakfast at Bob Paul's. And then Doug has, uh, did you put them in the back, the strawberries? They are. Okay. And that is the uh, Kelso Club that's selling their fresh strawberries. Right. Today's the deadline. So, okay. Anything else? Emergency board meeting afterwards. We don't need it. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Okay, I think we're good. We'd like to introduce our speaker, Larry. President of Maryland, fellow lands and guests, I would like to introduce uh, our guest today, Christopher Poloni. He is the uh, manager of the Kelso Airport, um, Southwest Washington Regional Airport, I guess you could more appropriately call it now, uh, but most of us are still calling it Kelso Airport because um, we've been here that long. But uh, it's exciting to see what's going on there and the changes that are taking place. I thought it'd be a wonderful thing for us to have an opportunity to have him come and share with that. So I'd like to have you give him a warm welcome. He's coming up here from California because he made the mistake of visiting here and said he wanted to move to the Northwest. So we got him here. Everybody, uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me here today. Um, okay, so I guess thank you very much again for having me here today. Um, again, my name is Chris Colini. I'm the uh, Newport manager. As uh, as Larry pointed out, I did come from Southern California. I worked at uh, Long Beach Airport. If anybody, if anybody from California, anybody that takes the state of living there, all right. Um, <laughs> I am not a fan. I lived there my whole life and uh, couldn't wait to escape this beautiful area up here. This is definitely God's country up here. I'm happy to be here. So. Um, let's tell you a little bit about myself and we'll move on to the airport just so you know where I'm coming from. Again, I'm from Southern California. Um, that adorable, just precious child in that top left corner is me. So I just want you guys to know that. Um, ever since I was old enough to say the words, uh, I've been in love with aviation. Um, that's uh, Corona Airport in Corona, California. Anybody from Corona, California? Anybody? No? All right. You didn't miss much. Um, but. Uh, 
That was me according to the airport when I was a little kid, and then the picture to the top right is also me uh, the day I got my pilot's license at 19 years old. Worked overtime at my job and saved money. Wanted to do it myself and just own that achievement. And then uh, sharing it there with my parents and grandpa. And then later on in life, bottom left corner, that's me the day I got my flight instructor ready for helicopters. That was in Oregon, another one of those chances when I got a sneak peek at the Pacific Northwest. So, and then uh, my beautiful wife in the bottom right corner, who uh, I don't say this just to be charming or anything, she really is my best friend and really is one of my, be my best fans as far as encouraging me and supporting me because they have a huge financial investment to try to make a career in flying and aviation, and she was there by my side through all of it. And that is our rat that she thinks is a dog. Uh, uh, our little dog there, who uh, never stopped looking like a puppy. It's kind of funny, but uh, anyways. Uh, that's Grizzly, because it's uh, appropriate, right? He's, he's, he's dangerous. He may lick you to death. He's a Yorkshire Terrier. I think he's about five ounces, and uh, hasn't grown since then. But no, he's about he's about six pounds, and uh, that's how he looks. He's like 11 years old. He looks like that. And, uh, he never changed color, but they usually do. So um, apparently, you can make a lot of money breeding them. He didn't find that out until after it was too late. Cause, uh, but anyways, uh, yeah. So if you have a Yorkshire Terrier that looks like that, uh, think twice before you take them to the vet. Anyways, uh, just a, a quick background again. I mentioned I'm from. Um, Long Beach, California, I was an uh, operations supervisor there. I worked at that airport for about five years. If you don't know where Long Beach is, it's in between Los Angeles International Airport and John Wayne Airport in Orange County, California. So we're, little, we're the big little airport that no one knows about. Everybody knows about LAX and they all know about you know Orange County, but uh, we're right in between. So. Anyway, I worked there for about five years after I had uh, tried to pursue a professional pilot, a professional pilot career. And then in the uh, 2008 stock market collapse, made me have to readjust my uh, my, uh, my dreams in life and my, our career path. And so uh, I found a, a airport management and uh, fell in love with that too. If you can't be a pilot, the next best thing is to be around it all day. And so um, at Long Beach Airport, my office is 1,100 acres. So, uh, my in operations, you do stuff in the office. You're also out on the field with tenants in the airfield. And uh, I just love it to death. So, um, but at a certain point, you need to keep moving your career up and you need to get out of California. And so I started looking for Pacific Northwest opportunities. and. The Southwest Washington Regional Airport had a position to open up, and the reason why it's called the Southwest Washington Regional Airport, by the way, now, um, actually I'll talk about that in a few minutes, I don't want to get it myself. But anyways, uh, so that opportunity came up to come here and be an airport manager at a general aviation airport. There's a lot of things that are different about a general aviation airport than a uh, commercial service airport like uh, LAX and Long Beach was. And uh, I just have, I, I enjoy the passion and, and the, uh, the enjoyment that uh, the tenants have in general aviation airport. There's a lot more opportunities there. It's a different atmosphere. I wanted to pursue that and then and contribute in that atmosphere. So I was purposely looking for a general aviation airport. I wanted to get away from commercial service for a while. So um, that's how I got up here. And uh, so I have a, a background as a little kid loving aviation and a certified flight instructor and and uh, spent five years at Long Beach doing that. And I before that I was also um, in operations at a smaller key airport before I went to Long Beach. So. Um, about, about six years in the actual industry before I came up here, and I have over 20 years in aviation since I started flying. So um, hopefully I can apply some of that to make this airport a little bit better. So uh, we just, I just started talking about it, so let me finish my thought on that. So we were the Kelso Airport, but several years ago, uh, the FAA uh, has a, they identified airports across the country as strategic airports, meaning the airport is crucial to that region for one reason or another. Usually it's for, uh, it, it, obviously, a transportation system. Our airport, because of our runway length, because of the fact that we offer fuel services, and because of the land available in case of emergencies and, and emergency response, local regional emergency response, identified, has identified our airport, but reminded us of that several years ago that you are a strategic airport. Let's start making steps so that you actually fulfill that role as a strategic airport. Some of the benefits of that, of being a strategic airport in the, in the FAA system, is that you get grant money every year. You get what's called entitlement funds. And those entitlement funds go to help improve the airport, whether it's uh, paving the runway or infrastructure improvements or uh, clearing airspace issues so that you can bring in larger aircraft, things like that. And so um, they started taking steps towards doing that. So they felt they wanted to kind of reflect that we're going in a new direction as an airport. And so just, instead of just being the Kelso local airport, they wanted to identify us as a regional airport. So we are the Southwest Washington Regional Airport. 
and financially we're supported by, by the local region. So we are supported financially by the city of Kelso, the city of Longview, Kellis County, and the Port of Longview. All four of them support us financially in our operations costs. And so it's very important that we realize that uh, if you have a regional asset, then we should be supported by the region. And so thankfully, all four entities see the vision and see the value of the airport as a as a piece of transportation infrastructure. We help with that. We help with the region. And so. Our goal now, in this step forward, is let's continue to improve that infrastructure and help it be supportive to local economic development, bringing in jobs and supporting the businesses that are already here. And I'll talk about how we're doing that now and how we're doing that in the next couple of years as well here in a second. So if we talk about an airport, we might as well talk about it like anything else, like someone looking for a job. What do we have to offer? What are we going to give to the community, right? And so I'd like to kind of just stop everybody for a second because a lot of us, Sadly, I've been here seven months, and I actually found out there's people that live inside the city of Kelso that didn't even know we had an airport. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. so I, I have my work cut out for me, to say the least, right? So I want to just kind of paint a picture really quick. Uh, this picture is a little bit fuzzy, but it's an actual representation of instrument uh, flights that have been filed with the FAA over a two-year period. Now. These flights are important because it, they're all either coming from the Southwest Washington Regional Airport or going to the Southwest Washington Regional Airport. Let me step out of the way from blocking some people. What you're going to see is a picture of the United States and flight paths of aircraft that either went to or from our airport. And you can see our airport isn't so tiny anymore. This 4,400 foot runway in the city of Kelso is no longer just this airport that no one knows about. We should know about this airport. I'll talk about Moult Taylor and, and uh, Maggie Davis a little bit later on, but our airport has some history already before I even got here that I can't take credit for. But um, anyways, we, we are literally uh, reaching across the country and into Canada and into Mexico from our airport. We already are touching the world. Just like your alliance of international, we as an airport are international. And so a lot of people didn't know that. I want to make sure that we all realize what we have as an asset here. This is not just private airplanes flying for fun. This is business jets that are coming in either to do business in our region or flying out to do business. We do have two business jets today at the airport full time, but we have several business jets that fly into the airport throughout the month. I have some people that say, oh, why do you see in the airport? I've never seen anybody flying there. Well, when are you over there? Well, I get home around 8 o'clock at night and I don't hear anybody. Well, you drive by the airport during the day, Monday through Friday, people do business, because it's happening. We have jets, we have a, we have a prop jet there now that's doing survey work for the region, he's basing himself at our airport while he's doing that regional work. So our airport is supporting the local economy. So, you know, some of the other things that we're doing is we're also supporting emergency services. Some of you may already know that Life Flight has moved over to our, our airport. They were based at um, St. John's Hospital on the roof. Unfortunately, there was some safety issues there that they were broken into which is just amazing that it's going to break into a helicopter on top of a hospital that that happened. But the other problem was is that they didn't have their living quarters were down the street from the hospital. So if they got a call in the middle of the night at 1 o'clock in the morning and said, hey, we have a car crash in the 5 freeway, they had to get out of bed, run down the street, because it was took just as much time to jump in the car and try to find parking to get there, and then go up the stairs to the helicopter. Now they literally are outside the door. Of it. They, they, they literally about five steps to get to their helicopter. We have a uh, trailer that was built over at the airport just on one the outside of the fence. There's a walk-through gate and the helicopter is parked right there. So they, they're, they're their response times is cut in half or more. And now they're also providing revenue to the airport, which offsets taxpayer dollars providing support for the airport, which is always a good thing, right? The more tenants we can get, the more revenue we can get on generating our own, you really get taxpayer support on the airport. And then also we support Kellogg's Fire and Rescue Training. Um, so, I don't understand, sorry, I'm like blocking everybody, but, uh, <laughs> okay. <I'm changing>. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, so, annually I do, um, we, we do training with the fire department, we bring out all of the volunteer firefighters, the paid firefighters, this year we actually, um, the corporate Longview Fire Department came out as well, um, all the way down from Kalama came up and, and, and was part of this training, where we let the firefighters actually get up close and personal with the aircraft and find out what the switches do, which ones they shouldn't touch during an emergency, and just a layout of the airfield. This year I put together a map of the airfield with critical information, where the fire hydrants are, where, the, where their access is that their, that their rigs can fit through, um, where the fuel tanks underground are located, all that critical information. They put that map into their computer system, so now they roll up to the airport and all that stuff is the touch of a finger, which is great. 
And this is all supported, by the way, by volunteers. All my volunteers helped out for three nighttime classes and four daytime classes for these firefighters over a two week period of time. I'm the only uh, paid employee of the airport at this point in time. So everything that I do comes from volunteer effort. So it's, uh, it's an amazing support group I have that, that I get to work with at the airport. But this is critical information, because I'm not sure if you guys heard or not, but just a few months ago, there was the airplane crash over in Astoria where the airplane unfortunately hit a deer on the runway. So, and that was a business jet. And sometimes when accidents don't happen for a while, we sometimes get complacent. We're like, oh, we're a, we're a safe airport. Well, we might be a safe airport, but accidents, accidents can happen anywhere for any number of reasons. So let's, let's not assume it's going to happen forever. So we need to keep that training up. And so thankfully, a lot of volunteers that believe in that and support us in keeping our firefighters informed. Especially with technology these days, we have airplanes, private airplanes that have airbags and parachute systems for the airplane itself, not just for you. And you don't want to just take an axe to an airplane the way you do to a burning house because there's rockets that can tell those parachutes. There's all sorts of complicated technology now, so it's very important that we take care of our firefighters. And then economic impact. Now, as an airport, generally speaking, we get our revenue from hangar leases, fuel sales, land and uh, land land leases, things like that. But we also get a lot of our, our financial support, besides the four entities that I mentioned earlier, from federal funds and state funds. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes because we have a few projects that happened and will be happening. And we also have airport-based businesses that we have, uh, we get tax revenue from. So some of you may not know this, but we actually have mechanics, aircraft mechanics, at the Southwest Washington Regional Airport that are so well known that we have pilots and business jets that fly in from several states around just to have him service their aircraft. So one of the things I'm going to be working on over the next year is increasing marketing, building partnerships with our local businesses to attract more people to come here, bring the tax revenue to our region, and let us benefit from that, and have these businesses that are already successful help them grow, because helping them grow helps us succeed, right? And the same thing with uh, AMA. Has anybody had AMA work on any of their, their stuff, furniture, car, or anything else? They're an upholstery shop, once again, they have a regional reputation. People fly in from all over with their airplanes, their boats, and their cars. You can even have them work on your furniture. Again, a great shop that's, that, that employs people here locally with livable wages, and we need to encourage and support those types of businesses, and our airport can do that. So we're going to work we're on cross-training in, in a little while. I talked about the FAA and, and uh, Washington State called Washout Aviation supporting us. So last year, we had over $600,000 impact our local economy. And that $600,000, only 5% of that came from us, came from us as an airport. The way it works is the FAA, because we are identified as a strategic airport, actually supports us by paying for 95% of approved projects that the FAA identifies as necessary for the airport. They pay 95% or 90, I'm sorry, 90% of that. Then the state pays 5% to match the 5% that we have to pay. So that's a leverage of you know 95 to 5% you know in, uh, investment into our local economy. That's fantastic, right? $600,000. For, um, what is that, for $30,000? Not a bad return on your investment, right, for your local economy. So, that was last year. This year, and in 2018, we have two projects. We're gonna be doing a airport master plan update. Every airport um, has one of these, and we haven't done one since 2011. There's been a lot of changes because the economy collapsed, there was some, um, there was some issue, there was some projections made that were used prior to that 2011 and updated, um, and updated in 2011 that don't quite fit, fit our new national economy economic model anymore. And so uh, we're gonna be updating that this year to find out where is the airport? What can we do? Where are our sewer lines? Where are our water lines? Um, if we did do any marketing, would it pay off? Because what is the national, um, what is the national health of the aviation industry? What kind of businesses can we support as an airport? So this master plan will be a year and a half long study and it's going to help us identify what we can do at the airport and how it will best serve the community and the region. And so that will be happening over the next year and a half. So we're really excited about that. Kind of like giving us a clean canvas to start with. We know what we have. Now where can we go and how are we going to get there? It's fantastic. We're also going to do a wildlife hazard plan. It's going to help us figure out how to mitigate wildlife so we don't have issues like... So we don't have issues with uh, you know, wildlife being on the airport. We use non-lethal techniques for stuff like that. Here's just a quick glimpse, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go through these next slides kind of quickly, but here's just a quick glimpse. These are all businesses that utilize our airport, and this is not an exhaustive <coughs> list. I just tried to fill up the screen, let you guys know. It's more than just a handful of businesses that use our airport. So we are working very hard to expand this list. 
So our goal is to make our regional airport a regional asset that everybody understands and acknowledges and supports so that we can continue to help the economy. So some of these pictures I'll just skip through. These are just some of the active pictures of businesses that use our airport. So looking ahead, um, we've kind of already talked about this a little bit, but I'm going to be working on a strategic plan this next year. We have the two FAA projects. The airport master plan update and the wildlife hazard plan are going to be uh, $450,000 in the local economy and 95% paid for by the FAA and WASHDOT. We also do, we also have the airport is trying to do a lot of things for the economy. I'm going to skip through these since I'm running out of time with questions at the end. But one of the things we're working on now is I'm working with the high schools. I want to, I'm not sure you know this, but uh, math and science in the United States, in the top, I think the top, don't quote me on this, I think it's the top 27 countries in the world. The United States puts most, we put more money than most of those countries into our education system, but for math and science, we're at the bottom of the list. And so I'm trying to work with our high schools. I've already met with our superintendent. We're trying to find ways to uh, have the airport create uh, education programs using aviation as a motivation to get these, these students to see the, the value of math and science as it's applied in the real world and have it be in a fun way. So we're going to be doing all, all sorts of community projects. I'm, I'm already working with several people, again, as I mentioned, and so there's fundraiser opportunities we're going to be working on, all sorts of things. I mentioned our, um, our Chicago network of volunteers, and uh, I'm just going to continue to uh, work those relationships because they are valuable assets to our economy. And, uh, and I, I truly believe, I truly believe that this, I, the reason why I took this job simply at this airport wasn't just to get to the Northwest. I do love it up here, but this airport has a lot of potential that I think has not been realized yet. And I think with a little bit of uh, leadership and a little bit of direction, we have so much support for this airport. It's not going to take much to really start to show that underneath a little bit of the rough of the diamond has been waiting to shine. So we're really excited about that. And like I mentioned before, just really quick, our airport's already famous. We just need to remind people about how famous it is. Mont Taylor flew the first certified flying car out of Long, uh, out of this Kelso Airport. All right, now the Southwest Washington Regional Airport. Um, that 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 information has been lost in time, but we need to remind people what our airport could be again. I don't have a picture for it, but anyway, so this was the first certified flying car. Now these days, that technology, that that thought process that, that has led to you know future designs of flying cars. And that happened right here in Southwest Washington Regional Airport. So if you look at this picture again, I just remind you as I finish up my presentation, people like Maggie Davis, who in the 70s made the Southwest Washington Regional Airport one of the busiest airports in the entire country. In 1973, our airport was the busiest airport for the number of landings and takeoffs in the entire country. There is no reason why we can't bring that back to this airport. That brings in fuel cells, increased hangar rent, and that alleviates the taxpayer dollars and also makes people more aware of our airport. It will also attract businesses here. And one of the things I'm very excited about is right now we have two people looking to build uh, business hangars at our airport. Um, both of them well over a million dollar invest would be a well over a million dollar investment each if they were both through. So we're actually working with the engineers at this stage, it's not just talking, we're actually putting putting money towards it, we're taking steps forward. So there's a lot of exciting things happening and hopefully with your permission, I can be invited back in a year and give you guys progress of what's happening because there will be a lot of changes just in the next 12 months. So anyways, I thank you guys. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. If you have time, I'll stay on for an answer as many questions as you want. Thank you. So on behalf of the Lions Club, we thank you for coming. Very interesting. And yes, I'm sure that it would be great if you'd stay after to answer a few questions. When speakers come, we always offer them up a mug that has our Lions logo on it. Thank you very and much. And an invitation to come and join us, so there's an application for Thank you very much. We are a lot of fun, don't you think? Yeah, it's, it's very fun. <laughs> <laughs> I find the dance and make it fun because I'm yeah. so fun at the beginning, so I just join you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Okay, just quickly, uh, the go forth activities, chuck wagon, ice cream wagon, spirits of Longview, not Italy. <laughs> oh, uh, be sure to, before you leave, go over and sign up if you haven't done that. Golf tournament coming up, need players? Go forth button, see Dolly. Dick's gonna be calling you and saying, hi, how are you? 
uh, Darlene have announced a relay and, and uh, if you have questions or want to sign up, see her. Also the luminary sacks, they really are beautiful when people do that. Dolly also mentioned if you've got a friend that's interested in joining, $25 off this week till Friday, right? Okay. I can sail at the barn. The barn? I'm just checking my notes here. That's a long time ago. Blue ticket. Blue ticket. Board meeting this Thursday first. Reminder, this Thursday, 7 a.m. at Bob Paul's. As I mentioned, next Tuesday, I want a spirit day wear your lion's pin. Also need to remind you again that there will not be a meeting on July 4th, but there will be a meeting on June 27th. Okay. So blue ticket, I've made you wait long enough. 9960-018. Pat Palmer? Didn't he win once before? Hmm. I hope he doesn't have to go to Vegas to spend it all. 4982144 is the red ticket. 2144, red ticket. We have a winner, um, Louie Fickett. So Louie, we generally like to donate that. Relay for life? Okay. And then goodies for relay. Okay. The winners today are Dickie. Dickie? And somebody says he never wins Doug Harvey. Wow. Woohoo! Doug Harvey's got dessert. <laughs> All right, we've got all of those. Is there anything else I need to say today? Goodbye. All good. Have a great day.